When the project first started in 1994, Chrysler was looking for an image-building car that would complement their huge trucks and SUVs. I think whatever you are, you look at it, it's a fantastic looking car and it's certainly more attractive than the majority of bigger cars are on the road today. While the PT Cruiser was in development, small MPVs like the Renault Megane Scenic or the Fiat Multipla were hot sellers in Europe, taking over where full-sized MPVs would have been bought before. The PT Cruiser attracted a great deal of attention on tour, and Chrysler quickly decided to build the cars at their Graz factory in Austria instead of in the USA. I think you have to look at the way trends are changing. People in Europe are really getting excited by retro styling at the moment. So you've got the new Mini, which is a massive success story, with the new Beetle, and then the PT Cruiser, which goes back to the hot rod styling. I think people are really looking for more kind of interest in retro styling in a car these days. The key to the success of the PT Cruiser is in the detail. Late in the Cruiser's development, the team realised the old neon steering wheel was boring, and they asked engineers to come up with a new design. The team quickly came up with a steering wheel that's as individual as the car itself. Likewise, a number of gear stick designs were considered before the current retro cue ball was selected. Well, I like anything that's American retro, so for me it's, it's just a, a piece of classic American motoring. The PT Cruiser hasn't been a huge sales success in the UK, but the people who have them generally love them.